Hello everyone and thank you for joining me again today. Now in this episode we want to think about Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 to 16 and chapter 5 verse 11 to chapter 6 verse 12. Two passages that are part of the writer's description of Jesus as our great high priest and in particular thinking about our response to this wonderful truth. Jesus is our great high priest who's passed through the heavens and he is indeed the Son of God. That's chapter 4, verse 14. The question is, given that truth, how do we respond as believers today? 4:14 to 16 gives us a description of the right response to Jesus as our great high priest. And 5, 11 through to 6, 12 gives us a, a great encouragement and a great warning to take to heart. So let's look then, first of all, at 4:14 4, to 16. And we see that the writer urges us in two very strong commands or exhortations. Verse 14, let us hold fast our confession. And then in verse 16, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace. And I want you to see the logic that he's using. Because Jesus is our great high priest, because the one who is our great high priest is Jesus who has pass through the heavens. Therefore, because of this, let us hold fast our confession. Do you see the logic? Because of who Jesus is and because he's of what he has done for us, let's hold fast our confession. That is, let's stay firm in our faith to the very end. Then he goes on to say that in Jesus the high priest, and we looked at this in our last episode, we have someone who is able to sympathize with us in our weaknesses, someone who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Now I've been thinking about that again since we did our last episode, and it dawned on me, of course, that one of the things that the writer wants us to see, that Jesus being tested or tempted as we are, has particular reference to the fact of turning away from the cross. The great temptation that Jesus faced was the temptation to turn away from the road of the cross and rather to follow, if you like, the road of glory or the easy road. We too, as believers, face that temptation. Certainly these first readers faced that temptation. And so what the writer is saying to us is we have in Jesus a great high priest who knows what it is to be tempted to turn away from the path of the cross and to the easy road of glory. Because we have that great high priest who was faithful to the end, because he is the one who was passed into the heavens having been faithful, we must hold fast our confidence. And then verse 16, he has the second response, draw near with confidence to the throne of grace because he's able to help us. And he can show us mercy in our time of need. What time of need? What help can he give us? Well, the help to stay true to our confession, to stay faithful to the road of the cross, even though it may be hard. So do you see how the writer's logic is working? In Jesus, we have this great high priest. Therefore, let's hold fast to our confession. In Jesus, we have a high priest who is able to sympathize because he knows what it is to be tested, especially to turn away from the cross. You remember the devil's temptations in the wilderness of Jesus were all trying to turn him away from the cross. When Jesus spoke about the cross, Peter says, not you, Lord, trying to turn him away from the cross. That's why Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. So Jesus knows what it's like to be offered an easier road to glory, not one via the cross. And therefore, he can identify with us. He can sympathize with, sympathize with us. And because of who he is and because he stayed true, we can now come to him with real confidence to that throne of grace where he's enthroned at the right hand of the Father. And there we can find help and mercy. So first response to the fact that Jesus is our great high priest. Let's stand firm. And let's come to him regularly for help because he understands the struggle that we face. Let's move now to 5.11 to chapter 6 verse 12. Now in this passage, our writer is addressing the readers as genuine Christians. Verse 9 makes that clear. We hold better hopes for you, things that accompany salvation. He tells them that they've had a great foundation laid. You'll see that in chapter 6, verse 1. And the foundation that was laid for them as Jewish Christians, of course, was 
this wonderful movement away from dead works and dead religion towards a living faith in Jesus Christ and understanding, verse 2, that the instructions about washings, about ritual ablutions that the Jews practiced, of course, we know that from the Gospels, that in Jesus we are truly washed and cleansed, that in Jesus we have a true priest, so the laying on of hands of other priests is not necessary. That in Jesus we have the resurrection from the dead guaranteed. And of course in Jesus we escape the eternal judgment. Those were the good gospel foundations that were laid for them. And now the writer says to him, look, you've had great foundations laid. I'm convinced that you're Christians. But the problem is, verse 11 of chapter 5 and again verse 12 of chapter 6, you have become sluggish. And the word that he uses there in verse 11, the ESV has it as dull of hearing. Uh, in verse 12 of chapter 6, it uses the word sluggish. Your translation might have different words. He repeats this word, and really what it's, what it's speaking about is the fact that they become spiritually lazy. So in this passage, 5.11 to 6.12, the right response to the fact that Jesus is our great high priest, that in him we have this great hope for the future, a priest who understands our problems, our struggles, our burdens, a priest who's laid down his life for us, the right response to that is simply this, don't be sluggish, grow up. Don't stay on milk, but move on to solid food. In fact, he says in chapter 5 verse 14, that this growing up, this maturity in Christ is a key element in terms of our ability to discern good and evil, to be able to distinguish the things in this world that are right and the things that are wrong. So this passage is a very, very important encouragement and exhortation to us to keep growing in our faith, to grow doctrinally in our understanding of the truth. He speaks about the word of God in this passage, as you would expect in Hebrews but also to live out that word of God in our lives. There's a lot in this passage about Christian living. And of course, there's a warning there, which is based on the parable of the sower. The little warning that you find in the middle of chapter 6, verse 4 through to verse 8, in which he reminds us that one of the worst things we can do is to keep listening to the word of God, listening to the word of God, but never actually believing it or putting it into practice. You'll know from earlier episodes that that is exactly what the people in the wilderness did and they could not enter God's rest. And so he's not suggesting that Christians can lose their salvation. Rather, what he's saying to real Christians is, don't be like those people in the parable of the sower who heard the word but were unfruitful. So what are the exhortations in the light of the fact that Jesus is our great high priest? Well, hold fast your confession. Approach his throne with confidence to find daily help. Don't be lazy. Don't be spiritually sluggish. Make sure you grow. Those are all very important exhortations for us today, as much as they ever were for the original readers. I do hope that as a Christian, you are making your own personal spiritual growth a priority. It's so easy for us to get bogged down and distracted. Hebrews chapter 12 warns us against distractions and the sins that trip us up. But rather than doing that, because of who Jesus is and because of what he's done for you, make sure you keep growing as a Christian. Make sure that you draw near to him and find help from him every day and stay strong so that you can finish well. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.